Well, hello. I'm here today with Ambassador Mark Dybel, the Executive Director of the Global Fund to Fight AIDS, Tuberculosis, and Malaria. This is perhaps the most famous global initiative to fight targeted at specific diseases in the world. Um, and so far, they have are recorded as saving 17 million lives to date since 2002, I believe. Um, however, we're here at a conference on universal health coverage, so I want to ask Ambassador Dybel, um, how does, with the Global Fund focusing specifically on these individual three deadly diseases, how have you been able to contribute to advancing this broad universal health coverage? So thank you. It's a great question. I'll just clarify because the way we work is to support the countries. So we've supported the countries to achieve 17 million lives saved, and I think that's a really important distinction because it relates to universal health coverage. So a, a few layers of that. The first, and I think a very important one for anyone who had been in the countries 10 years ago, is the HIV, TB, and malaria, and in particular HIV and malaria, and TB is the leading cause of death among people with HIV, so all linked, we're just clogging the health system. Mm -hmm. So during malaria season, 90% of the pediatric wards were filled with kids with malaria, 90%. Mm -hmm. Five kids in a bed. I mean, it's actually probably 900%, right. five kids in a bed. And it was not uncommon for a kid to die in the middle of the night in the bed and stay there until the morning. HIV, 90% of hospitalizations in the hardest hit countries were from HIV. And healthcare workers were disproportionately infected by and dying from, from HIV. So basically, if you didn't declog the system, mm -hmm. you can't have universal health coverage. The second is, and our board is really challenging us to focus on building resilient and sustainable health systems, which is the theme here. Um, and we do that in a variety of ways. No one owns that, but we support the countries to achieve procurement and supply chains, health worker systems and data management systems so the health workers actually respond immediately on the ground, whether you're a community health care worker or in a tertiary care mm -hmm. hospital. And the third way is by linking health together. So it's not just HIV, TB, right. and malaria. It's actually the health system, uh, those procurement systems, those human resource systems, mm -hmm. insurance systems are not just for HIV, TB, and malaria. It's the base. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why 40% of our resources go to, the, to what anyone would call a health system. Uh, it's actually linking with other health initiatives, linking with other partners, multilateral and bilateral, and actually linking a cross sector. For example, right. education and health for adolescent mm -hmm. girls and young women who are deeply affected by HIV. So basically, declogging the system, mm -hmm. investing in resilient and sustainable systems for health, and then linking health and other aspects of health right. to focus on a person, which is what the Sustainable Development Goals challenge us to do. Very good. And are there particular countries where you think that the Global Fund programs have, have made special contributions in advancing universal health coverage? Well, it's actually quite a few, but some, some standouts, I would say, would be Ethiopia. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, who was the Minister of Health, just talked about that 60% of what they built was basically funded by the Global Fund, and that achieved not only their HIV, TB, and malaria results, but their, they achieved their Millennium Development Goal for maternal and child death. Um, Rwanda, in a similar way, we actually invested in their health insurance scheme so that they okay. could achieve reductions in maternal and child death. Um, but it's actually much broader than that, and it's not just in Africa, it's global. Um, so it'd be far longer than we have to go into all the country examples. But again, the model that we were created by is a very different one. We're a 21st century partnership that is a mechanism for donors to contribute to, but for us to support countries. And so it's the country systems that we support, and it's the country-led systems that we support. And that partnership model uh, not only leads to better results on the ground, it also increases domestic right. finance for shared responsibility. It, it, it encourages a whole array of changes in a country um, that are difficult to get into a short uh, conversation. But uh, maybe you can just go to the website and you'll see a lot of phenomenal results. Wonderful. And thank you for your extraordinary work and thank you for taking the time to be with us. Thanks. Thank you.